Well, I mean, I'm obviously in the city of Jerusalem in the archaeological park, which is a beautiful excavation that started in, in 1967 after the Six Day War. And actually in certain places still continues to this day. I'm going to tell you an interesting story. This story is very fascinating. It's something that happened to me personally on a Holy Land trip in the early 1990s. We were invited at that time by my guide, Gideon Shore, my very dear friend, to go visit a rabbi, a leading rabbi in Jerusalem by the name of Rabbi Yehuda Getz. Rabbi Getz was connected with the group that was with the Western Wall Foundation that were excavating the tunnels that continue the Western Wall here in Jerusalem. Here's the Western Wall where the people pray. Well, you go back into the side tunnels where the men pray in those tunnels, and there was a lot of uh, debris that had been there for centuries. Uh, the date dates back, of course, to the Roman time, the Byzantine time, the Crusader time, and they were they were cleaning those areas out. So we got into a discussion about the Ark of the Covenant. There will be a video clip that you're going to see of a much younger Perry Stone, much younger Perry Stone. And he had a note, yellow notepad, and he was drawing out the tunnels that are underground, not here, but they're underground in this direction here that are parallel with the Western Wall. And there are, there are three layers. He was showing us the three layers that existed and how they were cleaning debris out. So I asked him a question that had been a curious question of mine for many years all the rumors about whatever happened to the Ark of the Covenant. Now, before the Babylonian captivity, here's what happened. Before the Babylonian captivity, it is believed that Jeremiah hid the Ark of the Covenant because he had predicted, and Isaiah had also said that the Israel would be dispersed twice and they would recover themselves the second time. So the first dispersion of the Jews would be during the Babylonian captivity when the Babylonians came and invaded Judea, burnt, burnt the temple down and took the Jewish Jews uh, captive, almost not hostage, but captive is the word that would be used in scripture, to Babylon for 70 years. So Jeremiah knew this was coming, so he hid the Ark of the Covenant. Now we do know that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 51 and 52, that it tells you that there was sacred furniture, inc including the candelabras and the all, all of this great precious material made of gold and a bronze and silver and so on that was taken into Babylon by the Babylonians. So they took that out of the temple. Now, Jeremiah, according to the tradition, told the priest to take the ark and to hide it. Now, there was traditions that began to develop where it was hid. One of those traditions, based on uh, some of the inferences in the book of Maccabees, would be that he took it and hid it um, where, where Moses had seen the promised land, which was on Mount Nebo. There was one theory that came that it was in a cave in the garden tomb. Well, many years ago, the garden tomb in Israel allowed someone to excavate all the way down where this man allegedly saw the ark and saw the dried blood in the ark, which is a story that literally, in my opinion, never happened or was, was fabricated. And that's my opinion because they dug down and they found absolutely nothing. So the, the, the best theory was that it would have been hidden somewhere under the chambers in the Temple Mount. Now here's the story we were told. Let's walk a little bit because I want you to get a little bit of a view about the how pretty this area is and the stones and so on. So Rabbi Getz said that, that many years ago they were excavating uh, in the tunnels and he received a call. Now this is what he told me himself. And he said that there was a crack in a wall and we're talking about several layers down and in that crack of the wall, he took a flashlight and put it over his shoulder and looked in a mirror and he could see the remains of the Ark of the Covenant. And according to him, some of the, there had been some rocks falling on it. There was debris around it. There was a cherub that, was, that was not, had been knocked over. There appeared to be what was dried animal skins that were a part of it. They were so dry, but so he did not go in. They did not break it open. And uh, the, the, the story later came out that they thought that he had a shofar when he blew the shofar. The Muslims heard about it, thought the Jews were digging under the Temple Mount and or, you know, caused a riot at night. And so the, it was just completely sealed off and shut up and no one was able to go back into that particular level and layer. 
Now, of course, there are archaeologists that were friends of his and that did work in that area, and none of them say anything specifically about that story or about the Ark of the Covenant. I'm of the opinion, though, that if it was concealed somewhere, it is concealed here in Jerusalem somewhere, somewhere under the Temple Mount area, deep down below, and it's not, it's not in great condition, it's not in great shape. I did ask him, I said, okay, if, if it's there, why haven't you brought it out? He said, we, we don't, we, worst of all, you wouldn't bring it out because it would cause a war. Secondly, you don't bring it out because there's nowhere to put it. And for them, they would not want it to be some kind of museum relic that people just come and tour. Uh, they would want it to be a sacred object. He said, number three is, uh, who's going to touch it and who's going to move it. So based on their understanding of Scripture, and we would call that as Christians the Old Testament, but based on their understanding of Scripture, when you handle the ark, only Levites can handle it. So there's no Levitical priesthood, there's no purification or sanctification that's taking place for them to even touch it or move it. Now, of course, a Gentile could move it, but the Gentiles the Gentiles in the Old Testament that moved it got emrods or hemorrhoids. That was the Philistines. So th that was the answer that I got. So this is firsthand information that we received in the early 1990s in the city of Jerusalem from Rabbi Yehuda Getz. Now, something interesting about Rabbi Getz, and I do bless his memory, he was a dear friend of mine, uh, is he told his wife, from what, uh, from what I was told by one of his dear friends, he said, in a certain number of days, on a certain day, I'm going to die. She said, how do you know that? He said, because God told me in a dream he was going to die. I was going to die and it will be this day. And to my knowledge, he didn't have any particular sickness or anything like that, but he did die on the day he predicted he was going to die. So there you go. That's an interesting story. So uh, a lot of times you'll read a book, you'll read an opinion. You know, some people said the ark was in Ethiopia, and some guy actually made his way to the church in Ethiopia and actually paid to see the ark, and it was not there. And the guy who was guarding it said, you have to see it by faith. It's a faith thing. You can't really see it, but you have to see it by faith. So, in other words, the amazing thing about the story is that that's, I had information from a man who was a part of the digs and excavations. That's the story he told me. Only time will tell what will happen there. And uh, Jeremiah did say the ark would not be mentioned again. So it's not needed in the kingdom of God because Christ is the ark and he's our you know, redeemer. So it's not needed in that sense of the word. But if it was ever found, you talk about something that would prove the Bible, that would prove history, prove the Jewish side of history, prove the, t the whole narratives that you read about in the Bible and history, it would be a wonderful thing, a wonderful ancient relic to discover. So there's your story. So if you like these kind of stories, give us a thumbs up. We, we're coming from Israel. A lot of our um, uh, YouTube videos are coming from here. We used to do manifest programs, but the reason we're not doing manifest programs from Israel is you have to take a whole team with you to carry the cameras. You have to get permission to put, set up these big cameras. And it, it became harder and harder to get permission to go into these areas. And number three is there's areas that we can go with this little camera right here, this phone, that we were never able to go before. And we call it off the beaten path. So thank you for joining me. And as always, go to perrystone.org and stay in touch with our ministry through that. And stay in touch with occasionally where we're gonna be coming to to minister. Be sure and miss, uh, don't miss, be sure and don't miss our major conferences. And as time progresses, we're gonna be going overseas in ministry. And we're gonna be doing a lot of different things that we've never done before with the help of the Lord. He's been good to us, he's helped us, he's, he's brought us through so many things and he is still anointing the, the ministry and anointing his word. We're grateful for that. Thank you for joining me. It's time to learn what you don't know about your future. Now available is Perry Stone's new landmark prophetic book, Your Journey into Eternity, Life for the Next Thousand Years. Discover what occurs the moment your inner eyes are opened at death and your spirit returns to God. Journey through the three levels of heaven, including paradise, where Christian martyrs rest. Learn about the new body you will receive at Christ's return or at the resurrection, and why the dead at times appear in dreams, and what memories you have after death. Learn about the marriage supper in heaven from a Hebraic perspective and what the Bible teaches about the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem coming down. Perry unlocks the mystery of babies in heaven, including miscarried and aborted infants. Perry also explains what our thousand-year reign with Christ will look like on earth. Read Perry's parabolic revelation about what if God said yes to the dead? Will your family circle be unbroken in eternity? Perry presents often untaught insights using his 46 years of in-depth biblical research from the Old and New Testaments. 
The book includes incredible Greek and Hebrew word studies, as well as amazing stories that reveal secrets of life after death, events in heaven, and life on the new earth. Perry is also including an audio teaching, The Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, that his friends say is the most interesting biblical teaching from the book of Revelation he has ever taught. In this teaching, Perry shares secrets in Heaven's Temple, the most important building in Heaven, where all human records and tribulation judgment files are kept. It is here where you will stand at the judgment seat before Christ's throne and give a face-to-face -face account of what the angels have written about you, from birth to death, including all your idle words and how you treated others. This is a teaching that will alert you to what you say and cause you to guard your words and actions. The landmark new book and two-hour audio teaching is available for your gift of just $35 or more to help keep Manifest on the air around the world. To order this offer, visit perrystone.org or call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. You can also order by sending $35 to Perry Stone Ministries. P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer ET143 when ordering. We look forward to hearing from you soon. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.